Let's talk to Brett in Missouri. How's it going, Brett? Hey, Brett. Hey, how you doing? Ah, uh, not too bad. So this here that you want to talk about is atheism objective or subjective? Well, there's that, and I got some other questions if you guys got the time. All right, well, shoot. Well, the first question would be what you just mentioned. Do you believe that atheism is subjective or objective? Well, um, I would say that it's skeptical, um, and so it tends to be more objective than not. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's a, it's a position on a question about objective reality. Yeah, would you say that atheism is uh, could be associated with objective reality, or is it just simply a subjective uh, opinion of yours that there's no God? It, it's a position on an objective question. So the question is, does a God exist? And we're saying, prove it. And until then, I'm, I'm not holding my breath. Like we just talked about with the last caller. You know, if I say there's an elephant back behind this bookshelf, the answers are yes, no, or I don't believe you. If I say yes or no, I have to back it up with evidence. I don't believe you isn't necessarily the same thing as no. It just means until you show me a reason to trust you, I'm just, I'm not going to buy it. And so it is an objective point. Uh, it's, it's a position on objective reality. I don't know if calling a belief objective tracks in my brain that way, but like, yeah, yeah. To, 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 to go for what you're saying here, I would say objective makes the most sense. Yep. All right. Fair enough. My next question would be more of a, a science question. Um, mm -hmm. How would you explain in a naturalistic uh, worldview with evolution, how pain receptors came into existence? They're, they're just a type of nerve. So like you have all sorts of different kinds of nerves all over your body um, that send the exact same kind of signal. It's just an electrochemical signal up to your brain. The action potentials work the same way. It's just different chemicals in different directions. And so uh, you have uh, thermoreceptors for, for you know feeling heat. You have uh, mechanoreceptors that feel pressure and, and deformation of cells. Um, nociception is the perception of pain when these things you know are... are experiencing damage to to your cells and so it's just a signal to your brain telling you hey there's a problem and there's lots of different ways that that works there's lots of different cool ways that that's evolved and, and lots of different uh, cool pathways for it but honestly it's it's just another nerve doing the same thing that nerves do so it's it's I, it, I it's not anything boring it's just work. not magic yeah i understand so how pain receptors work i'm just asking yeah, yeah. Uh, not the horse but the carriage here why did the pain receptors come into existence in the first place? You believe we originally started out as a self-replicating cell, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we still are self-replicating cells. We're just a bunch of them now. The, the short answer is Why you have to have some way to avoid way? thing. Well, you have to have some way to avoid uh, things that are going to hurt you and to find things that are going to uh, keep you alive. And what we describe as pain is generally a, uh, you know, a, a, our body's going, hey, this this is not a good place to be or a good thing to be doing, so stop doing it. Um, yeah. So you, you need that kind of, you need that kind of a feedback system, right? And that's all pain really is, is a, is a, a feedback system uh, to the organism that says, hey, stop doing that or, or run away. I think to even build on that further, just as an example you're of saying, you're saying that we we need this to happen, but evolution doesn't have a consciousness. It doesn't care if we die or suffer or go through no. the worst extremity. Why would it? No, but know, evolution but is before. based on natural selection and natural selection works by the simple principle of if you do X, you die. If you don't do Y, you die. And so the ones that don't do X and do Y tend to live and pass on the genes. So the ones that had the alleles for working on this uh, you know, properly, this is basic, you know, neo-Darwinianism. This is not the complex, exciting, you know, <laughs> details, but like basic neo-Darwinian evolution. It's just, if you have the alleles that give you the advantage, you survive and you have more offspring that also have those alleles. And if you don't have the right alleles, you die and you don't pass on those, uh, those uh, you know, have more offspring this way. So when we're talking about anything from, from nociception to eyesight to, you know, uh, the ability to see a, a specific color or smell a specific smell, whatever it is, if this gives you a survival advantage, you're going to have more offspring than the ones that don't do this. Um, you know, chordates are, oh gosh, uh, if I remember correctly, like 
500 something million years old. I'd pull that off the top of my head. I, I don't remember. Someone will correct me, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> to have that spinal cord in the first place is a relatively new thing. And then to have, you know, nerves functioning in this way is just building off of that system that was already there. Because evolution, remember, is not an inventor, it's a tinkerer. So we just take these cells that are already there and make something better out of it. So uh, it, it would work the exact same way as anything else ever would evolve. If it gives you an advantage, then you live. And pulling your hand off of the, the stove when it's hot, uh, that absolutely is an advantage. <laughs> And to play off what Jeff was saying, I'm uh, sorry, what Jim was saying just a second ago also, um, you know, it's important to remember that there's a lot of ways these things happen. So just this is point of interest that I think you might, you know, help put this together in your brain is that a lot of people think about this as it has to go all the way up to your brain and then all the way back down to whatever extremity and this, this big complicated thing. You have other ways of your body functioning when it experiences pain. The example of pulling your hand away from a hot stove, when you experience you know, this extreme sensation, the signal doesn't even go all the way to your brain. It just goes to your spinal cord, loops back around. You have an involuntary jerk back re uh, reaction. We pull your hand away. So like these are different ways that your nerves work, different ways that they send signals because getting to your brain wasn't even fast enough. It wasn't good enough. That extra millisecond could have caused you a little bit more pain. So like there's, there's lots and lots of beautiful ways that these things work. Uh, and you can track the history of it. It's, it's, it's not a mystery. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I think it's just a very simple explanation. And, and to riff off a little bit of what Forrest was just saying, um, these systems aren't perfect. They're, they're not well designed um, by any stretch of the imagination because they're easy enough to, to fool and get crosswired. Um, yeah. And that happens because they're not well designed system because you had a mad tinkerer, uh, a metaphorical tinkerer back there just you know, putting stuff together and having to keep the, the organisms running while they tinkered with other stuff. Um, and so some of that redundancy comes from, from uh, some of that as well, like the uh, laryngeal nerve. Um, why does it do what it does and, and why does it take the path that it does? It wraps around, um, shoot, I can't remember. Uh, Your heart. The, what, yeah, it wraps around the heart. I just remember what part, but uh, it wraps around the heart and then comes back up. Well, that's the nerve that controls our vocal cords. Um, it does the same thing in humans that it does in giraffes. Um, it's dumb enough in humans for the, the nerve that controls the vocal cords to wrap to, to go all the way down, wrap around the heart, come all the way back up. But it's even dumber in giraffes. <laughs> and it's the same in, uh, I, I forget, you know, in, in multiple species, all have the same issue. Um, and, and the reason why is it started off as something else way back when, and then as things evolved and changed, um, its function changed and eventually yep. became what we now call uh, a voice box and, and a laryngeal nerve. Um, but to say that's well-designed is to completely and totally misunderstand engineering. Um, as a software engineer, I don't try to make things more complicated despite what people say about software. I try to make things easier and I don't know of a single engineer that intentionally tries to make things complicated and call that good engineering. Um, they try to simplify things. And that's not what we see with with the nervous system. Yeah, there's a million and one examples of that exact thing. It, it, when we talk about vestigial structures, these leftovers from evolution, it's a fascinating topic. But I will talk about that for five hours. And I want to get on to what else Brett had to say. What was what was the next thing? I, I hope that answers uh, your question. Looks like he, oh, he dropped. Oh, well, crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope that that was enough for you. I hope that that helped a little bit. I know we kind of went off on a bunny trail there, man, but I hope, yeah. I hope it answered your question somewhat. Yep. 